Hi guys, my name's Doug. Welcome to my messy garage. In this week's video, we're going to take a look at my 1971 Evinrude 18 horse. This motor was purchased brand new by my father in 1971. It's been with the family ever since. Put in many, many years of uh, faithful service. Never really let us down. But um, in the mid-90s, onward and upward, bigger, better boats. This thing kind of got left sitting in behind my father's garage for a number of years. Uh, a few years ago, it got moved into some weather tight storage, but uh, definitely the years have taken its toll. What I want to do with you guys is go over this thing and we'll see if we can get it to uh, fire up, run and be a reliable motor once again. If, uh, if it's going to be a good, reliable motor, then we'll spend some time and money clean it up and uh, hopefully make it look nearly new. Anyways, follow along. Hope you enjoy this one. Thanks for stopping by. A few of the things that I know this motor needs, it's going to need a uh, water pump. Pretty much guarantee it's going to need seals in the lower unit. The last time I used this motor, I know for sure it was uh, jumping out of gear and uh, therefore I think we can safely say the shift dog is gone. It was kind of a fairly common problem with uh, this vintage of uh, OMC unit. The, the forward shift dog would wear out and uh, then you'd have a hard time keeping it in gear. You could reverse it and uh, then you'd have to hold it in reverse, but let's face it, that's not a big loss. I don't know if this one's been reversed or not. Um, definitely, I know we had some issues with it over the years. Some other problems that we've got, the, uh, the swivel and the, uh, the tilt are uh, quite stiff. They're definitely going to need some lubrication. And um, I think I see a little bit of fuzz poking out here and there. I'm pretty sure we've got to issue some eviction notices from up underneath the cowl. Let me get you set up in a stand and we'll take the cowl off and we'll see what we've got to deal with. The release for the uh, cowl is back here. And yeah, that's what I was worried about. All sorts of fuzzy things in there. Let me grab some gloves and uh, I'll start pulling that out of there. And then we'll get a vacuum and vacuum that up so I don't end up with most garbage all over my garage. Big enough mess in here as it is. The good news is it doesn't stink all that bad. A little bit of damage to the foam in there, but that's not really all that surprising. Well, let's try out the new bucket head vacuum cleaner. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. It's a, uh, I guess Home Depot sells them and they just fit in a five gallon pail. Turns it into a wet dry vacuum. <laughs> Well, we can see a little bit of corrosion in and around, but really, you know, not that bad. I'm gonna say that the, uh, the tenants weren't in there all that long. I'm not really seeing too much that uh, indicates a bunch of chewed wires. Uh, don't see any hoses that have been chewed off. Um, a little bit of corrosion in here, but not too bad. There we are, mostly demousified or squirrelified or whatever the heck was living in there. Chunk or some kind of critter. I'm not smelling any mousps or anything like that. So uh, either it's been a number of years since they were in there or the, uh, they weren't in there all that long. Grab the flywheel and uh, feels like we got some compression there. Doesn't feel unusually stiff. How about we uh, pull some spark plugs out, take a look at these. I don't see any major issues with the coil wiring. And there's a connector that's been changed here at some point, but I don't see any uh, connection issues. Let's grab a spark plug socket and we'll uh, pull those plugs out. Here's our two spark plugs. Definitely calendar wise, they've been in there for 
30 years but um, I wouldn't say that they have very many hours on them they look like they're in pretty good shape a little oily but that's to be expected with a two-stroke let me squirt a little bit of uh, lube into the pistons and then we'll give it a try pulling it over and see what it does just give the, the cylinder walls a little drink and make sure that we don't have any uh, critter remnants that look like it's going to get sucked in I think we're good there let me see if I can get around you guys I would say the, uh, the recoil is going to need to be uh, cleaned up that looks pretty good now let's pull it over and see if we get any kind of spark out of that ho oh, ho we got spark there try the other cylinder nice bright spark there I'll put the plugs back in it hook everything back up here and I think I'm gonna have to see if I can figure out a way to put some uh, water to the lower unit of this uh, motor now I fully plan on changing out the um, water pump on this but I know that outboard aficionados will absolutely lose their minds if I fire this thing uh, without putting water to the lower unit so let's do it right uh, one thing that I do want to do before we um, before I grab the bucket of water and make everything wet I'm going to uh, check the lower unit and see if there is any oil in it let me uh, get you guys set up and I'll grab a screwdriver got the outer plug right here out of it and I'll back this out down at the bottom Ooh, 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 that looks like a little bit of water. That's not a good sign. I don't feel any uh, crunchies on there, but that definitely had a little bit of water in it. Uh, kind of confirms my suspicion that the uh, the lower seals are absolutely shot in this I have no idea when they were redone last obviously with the white Johnson skeg that is on the uh, the blue heaven motor at some point something's been done with this lower unit definitely uh, I'm not aware of seals being replaced at any time um, before we try and run this thing let me put some uh, lube in there I think I got a bottle of it just sitting a couple of feet away now that I've checked the lower unit with it down at the bottom, I uh, allowed any water that was accumulated in the bottom of the lower unit to drain out, and we did find a little bit in there. I've tilted the motor up, and we can take the top plug and the bottom plug out, and you can see that I've already got some oil dripping out of there. You take your jug, stick it in here, and pump until you get oil coming out of the, uh, the bottom plug because it's a little bit higher that tells us that our lower unit is full of oil start the plugs back in and wipe up any excess And for seals, there's uh, going to be some seals in for the propeller shaft, and uh, there's a gasket, kind of like a O-ring that's not an O, uh, that runs around the perimeter here, that will need to be replaced. There's going to be a uh, seal in the where the shift shaft comes down, the shifter shaft comes down into the lower unit, and also there's going to be a main input seal on the. Uh, the drive shaft that comes down from the motor into the top of the lower unit. I think we're going to safely have to replace all of those seals. Uh, likewise, in the top here, there'll be a water pump assembly. I'm going to guess it's probably in this enlarged area right here. 
I don't know that that doesn't work, but given the age of the motor and it's probably the original water pump, definitely we will be replacing that. Let me lower this back down. I'll have to go find a garbage can that I can put some water in and uh, give this a little bit of gas and see what it does. Well, I gotta admit, this one's kind of got me stumped a little bit. Right now, I'm out of the coil through the spark plug tester and into the spark plug. And I'll pull this thing over and I don't think we're going to see any spark. I don't see anything. But yet, when I take, put a bolt in the end and just drape it up over the top, we got good spark. Now, we haven't done anything with the points on this. So I'm wondering if the, uh, the points are somehow gummed out and the uh, recoil cover is getting a good ground but the rest of this stuff isn't. So I'm gonna pop this uh, recoil off and, uh, and we'll see if we can convince the flywheel to pop off of there without too much difficulty. And we'll see what's going on underneath. I have a stinking suspicion there's a set of points under there that are a little on the fuzzy side. Let me get some tools together and then we'll take this thing apart. I would have to guess that this is uh, the first time this somebody's tried firing this motor up in, uh, oh, I'm going to say 30, 35 years. So the fact that it's being a little bit difficult doesn't really surprise me. Top nut is three quarters. Hmm. I'm kind of surprised that that popped. Three nice little bolt holes up on the top there that a uh, harmonic balancer puller should th should thread into. Cheap generic harmonic balancer puller. A lot of times you need to be careful about putting the, uh, the threads too far through the top of a flywheel. If the coil pack is under the flywheel, you can actually put the bolt through and damage the coil pack. And there we are. Pop. I don't see anything terribly bad on those points. Let me uh, take the camera off the stand here and I'll put you guys up to show you. So I guess this is our uh, our primary pickup. And then we've got our, uh, our two sets of breaker points here, one for each cylinder. And uh, I don't really see anything too terrible in there. Uh, the condensers could be bad. That is a possibility. Uh, they are definitely 51 years old. But uh, let me get a little bit of sandpaper and we'll just run it through those points just to make sure. Actually, I think I might have a points file. Take a nice little uh, flat fine file. And we slip it into the points and just give them a little give them a little cleaning up. Given the nice bright spark we we're getting when we were grounding out to the recoil cover, I'm kind of surprised that we weren't getting a better spark off of the uh, off the spark plugs. Well, let me put the flywheel back on and uh, we'll try it again. We are uh, grounded to the spark plug this time again. Off of the top coil, there's our spark tester. Oh, there we go. That's all it needed. Well, that's what I wanted to hear. That's success. We've got it to fire. That tells me that uh, we probably have a good viable candidate and we can continue on here. Next step I want to do is uh, let's put a compression tester on it and see what the compression looks like. So we've got our uh, compression tester here, screws into the spark plug and builds up pressure and then there's a relief valve and we're done. I got both spark plugs out so that I'm not pulling against a uh, charged cylinder that I don't need to be. We thread that in. There, can you guys see that? You guys can see that. Now I gotta get around the camera here so that I can tug on the cord. First thing first, so that I don't get yelled at again. We'll put this in forward gear, not because we want it to go forward, 
but because then I can open the throttle up all the way. Throttle is open, absolutely all the way open. Now I have this four or five tugs. Um, if it was a, an electric start motor, of course, you just hit the key once and let it build up some pressure. But uh, because it's a uh, manual recoil, I got a tug on it. And what do we got? Ooh, we're 105 thereabouts. You guys see that? That's uh, that's promising. I think we're uh, in good shape here, so you guys can actually see that. Let me give this uh, four or five tugs. I realize that didn't work so well, but again, right around 105 psi. I'd say that this is a very viable candidate for uh, for some cleaning up, get it uh, resurrected, and uh, get it back on the water. I spoke to my father about this, and um, the story he gives me is he purchased the uh, the boat. He's got a Thorns 14 foot skiff, and you'll probably see that on the channel a little bit later in the summer because we're going to uh, do some repairs on it. He purchased the the Thorns boat from Eaton's catalog. And he purchased this motor from the local Evinrude dealer, or local OMC dealer, uh, in Geraldton, Ontario, where we were living at the time. The motor he paid $600 for, and the boat he paid $400 for, so it was $1,000 pretty well even, probably plus or minus a little bit of sales tax. Now, $1,000 back in 1971 would have been a fair amount of money. At the time, you could buy a pretty nice car for three, four $4,000, so uh, I don't know what that would be in today's dollars. But uh, still, good package. And uh, as I say, the, the, this motor has had a lot of use over the years. And to see that we've got uh, 105 PSI on each cylinder is, is, I'm very happy with that. But before we call it quits, I want to dump a little bit more fuel in those spark plug holes. Tug her over one more time. And we are in neutral. Bring the throttle up to the start point. Anyways, it fires and runs. Sounds really good. I think uh, we're gonna have a good machine here. I've done a little bit of research. I got a carb kit on order, uh, 039-6701, $3.34 from, um, from marineengine.com, but I found it on eBay for about 25 bucks, so I ordered that. Uh, if you get the Sierra kit without a float, it's $20. I prefer to get the BRP stuff. Uh, seal kit, I wasn't able to find a genuine BRP one, and the Sierra is no longer available from marineengine.com. Uh, and I got a water pump with housing for $91 instead of $98.67. And brand new spark plugs although the uh, spark plugs that are in it as i suspected seem to be working just fine i think that's where we're going to end this one for now thanks a lot for stopping by greatly appreciated appreciate it if you could uh, throw me a subscription do a like all that wonderful stuff i'm trying to get up to 500 subscribers by uh end of july so i'd appreciate it if you could uh, subscribe thanks a lot for uh, checking out this video and we'll catch you in the next mass